Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. Today we will talk about ClickUp and how we use ClickUp and where we position ClickUp inside our framework. So very quickly for those of you who don't know what the ICO framework is yet, it's split into four parts. It's the personal knowledge management, the business knowledge management, the business project management, and the personal project management. These are the four parts of the i framework. That's the key in the whole framework to understand when you place your tools in there, what part of your life is affected by this or how do you use these tools in the best way possible. So for us, it's a good example here, the ClickUp. Many maybe use it in business project management and then they also use Notion in business knowledge management. I saw this, we used it in the past as well, the combination of both of them, but we managed now to completely move to ClickUp and therefore we move it in the middle here. And this just means you see here the overlap in part that we use ClickUp for business project management, but also for business knowledge management. And this is where we put ClickUp in there. I know people ask if it is possible to use it for the personal project management as well or the business like this, right? Obviously, that's also possible. This means if you use it for all the spaces, it would be in the middle, the ultimate single source of truth. But we have a lot more tools that we use in our business, but also separately. So Paco is using different tool sets than I use. And we will talk in the future more about our personal frameworks. But today we want to focus on ClickUp because this was requested many times that people want to see how we actually apply iCore inside ClickUp. What you see here is our six folder structure as we call it. And uh, it is, for those of you who know ClickUp, that's familiar what you see here. But for those of you who don't, there are different spaces that you can have in ClickUp. So we are right now in the Team Paperless Movement space. I have some personal spaces, a demo space on the side. And we are talking today only about the Paperless Movement space. I said six folder structure. You see a lot more folders here, but this is where what I want to explain right now. So we have the Projects folder. We have the work streams folder, we have the operations folder, the documentation folder, the database folder, and the LS meetings folder, which could be also just the meetings folder. And let's start with the meetings folder on top very quickly. So what we have established here is something that we have, we just have a weekly huddle. I know that from corporate, daily standups and all this, but we optimize our work so far that we really just have to have one update meeting per week and everything else works inside ClickUp because it's our single source of truth and the things that we share are in there or if something needs to be communicated, usually we use Slack, but in combination with ClickUp. So that's uh, things that we don't dive too much into today. Today we will focus only on ClickUp and not the combination with other tools. So this is the part where then during the week when things come up that need to be discussed, we will write them in here. Okay, so LS means leadership. So that's Paco and me. And when we have anything to discuss, I think we should talk about this, but we don't want to interrupt each other's workflow. We just write it up here so we don't forget and we can talk about this on the next Monday huddle. Let's uh, just say a new landing page. All right. And then I save it and all the information that we have is here automatically who created it. It's not assigned. It's who created it. The priority. I could now set priority. So it's high. If you learned about the iCore in the iCore course and the membership, then you know how we set priorities. So priority high means it's aligned with our business goals. And if you have a normal, then this means it's just an optimization. All right. So this allows us very quickly to decide what to talk about in the next meeting first. So if we have a list list of things with yellow and blue, it's easy to know where to start. So we start with the yellow ones in this case. And then maybe I forget in one week what this was all about. So for this reason, I would go in here and share more details. Sometimes we had some discussion on Slack. Therefore, we created a task out of Slack. It automatically creates a link back to the conversation. So there's always the context available when it comes to the talk one week later and we never had an issue everything was ready it's important to say that we got the comment uh, area also on the right hand side and that's important too because there when we talk we write there our comments and things like that so that if we consider that this is, is something that needs to be talked deeper the next time that we go there we can perfectly remember everything we said no whenever anybody has an idea we go in here, write it here, and then we decide 
what we do with that idea afterwards. Maybe that becomes another object, that becomes a new goal, a new project, a new task, nothing at all. You can see as something that can seem at the beginning as life-changing as time passes by, it disappears and it wasn't so important. So that's our single source of truth to interchange any kind of idea that come to our mind. And if as we process this agenda every week, it never gets collapsed. So if we talk about the landing page and we agree that's something important and that aligns with our goals for this quarter, then we would just simply use it and move it over into the marketing and sales in this case, for example, and then we make it in progress or not started depending, and that's it. And it's gone, all right? It moved away from the agenda. It's out of our mind. It became an actionable item in sales and marketing down here. All right. So this is how we can quickly convert information to action, but without creating even more tasks inside existing projects, because those are very well defined what we really need to do. And here you see the color coding again. This is actually our priority coding. So you see here, these projects are aligned with our quarter goals. And if we have time left, then we would approach our optimization goals. That's how this is set up. And then when we complete something or we have tasks that we know that they are not fitting into our current schedule because it becomes too much, then we move them over to the next quarter here. So there's nothing in there yet, but we could create a new project or anything like that where we have the ideas. So talking about priorities, let's quickly create something again. Low priority would be simply an idea. So we could set it this way and therefore we could move them over into sections where we only talk about ideas. And something equal happens to our work streams because this is one-time tasks. So for example, when we go to the website, how we work on this, and these are one-time tasks. Once we finished, they are completed. And once the whole project is completed, the whole project is completed. So therefore, we have work streams, which are ongoing recurring tasks. So for example, like the video production or our iCore talks. So when we go to our iCore talks, the one that we have right now, We have it in here and then you see here they're prepared already and we can work through this work stream. So this means each task has work instructions that we work through, creating the event and uploading the thumbnail and things like that, which is then inside our documentation in the work instructions, how we approach this. Same applies to group coaching, expert interviews, for example, where you see here all the previous interviews, how they work. And there's a lot of automation going on as well. So we are not relying on manual updates. So you see here, that's even more complex. But be ensured, as soon ClickUp 3.0 comes out and all the new design is there, we make sure that we will double down on providing you a ClickUp course inside the Payless Move membership where we dive into how we set all these things up in more detail for you with everything that you see, automations, how we apply iCore and so on. The point is that this is to show what building a productivity system is. This is a combination of workflows that we have implemented in a tool that could be implemented in many other tools. We consider that ClickUp, it was the one that best fit our needs. But as you see, we are creating a system. When we got an idea that goes to the agenda, we discuss it, then that goes to a task and it belongs to a project. And that's yeah. how we create things. And that's how you can start creating your own productivity system, the one that perfectly fits your needs. That's why, for instance, why we created that division and between projects and work streams, for instance, because we have recurring things that are always running and this is it. Yeah. And here you see another thing. So we just talked about the leadership agenda, but here is, for example, the iCore talk agenda for what we have right now, the iCore talk. Here you see, we talk about the ClickUp Level Up event and iCore Inside ClickUp live demo. That's what we're doing right now. And then here we have a relation to the actual task, to the actual iCore talk, which is then down in the work streams, which is here. So now you could say, why are you doing this? Why are you splitting information into two different places when you could just go to the iCore talk here and write down your ideas in here? The reason is we have a much better overview having it on a separate list and making the connection here because if we don't have enough time inside our talk, for example, here, We have blue priorities. This means if we have enough time left, we could talk about the things. Maybe we run out of time and we have to move it to the next ICO talk. Now this evening, we can tick these off and they are out of our agenda. And when we click here, we see easily the relation. 
So we see here the relationship, it's the i core talk. On the other hand, the same, the other way around, if we are in the i core talks and you go to your task, then you see here what we want to talk about in this i core talk because we have the relationship showing up here. I can easily click in here, add more information if I need to. And this is giving me a simple list where we can write down our ideas, what we want to talk in the i core talks. And then we can simply click here and pick the next i core talks that we think we want to talk about this and that makes it much easier to access and we see a full list of things so because here automatically brings up the next state of the icor talks and then it's easier to move things around then we have it in here another option would have been using subtasks and then you have a list of subtasks and then moving the subtasks around but that's just something with the cross-linking and with all what it comes to clickup 3.0 that that's the way that we prefer to do it. Here, here people can see how flexible this is, that it can be something that people like or something that people hate. For us, this flexibility give us all. And that's why we combine the knowledge management and the project management into ClickUp. Because as you can see here, we can store all the knowledge related to a task, a project or whatever. So everything makes sense for us. And we will see also the documentation area in the databases that that's related also to, to knowledge. But that's the beauty of ClickUp, that you can combine knowledge management and project management in the same tool. So that reduces the friction for us because our single source of truth is crystal clear and we know where we can find everything. So now we just talked about projects. We talked about tasks and actually to-dos. So to-dos is the level that we say are the actionable items. That's an ongoing project, right? So we completed, for example, this task and there are to-dos in there. So only the to-do are the actionable items where we need to do something. That's the action point that has a, something to complete in order to close the task. If, the, if all the tasks in a project are closed, the project is closed. If the, all the projects inside the folder is closed, the goal is closed for this quarter. And now we can go to the goal and we are here. And there we go. These are the three goals for our quarter one in 2023. And here we are ramping up the consistent content production again. We established our new partnership program to have verified partners on there. So if you haven't seen it, you can go to the website. There's now the become a partner section for companies and partner experts. And then establish the iCore tool finder. So when we go, for example, in here, there we have a list connected. And that's really the things that I love. I hate updating things like this manually because it never works. Or you have to have a person who has the recurring task to update the information, but it's always manual update. That's why we like using the goals feature inside ClickUp because here you see 11 out of 13 tasks. I can click on the list. So that's one list connected here. It's website 3.0. And these are the open tasks that we still need to complete. And this was the main part of the iCore tool finder, all right? So we could rename this actually as iCore tool finder. Going back, that's the same thing here, consistent publications. Here we go, 30 YouTube videos, 30 blog posts, and it's all connected to lists. And when we close the lists, it would get automatically update the tasks here. And therefore, see, we just started the iCore talks and it will, we will see the progress of the goals in here. The reason why we do the separate folders where you might think, man, why don't you just go on, is the goal management. That's it. So we have the same thing for the work streams because it's ongoing. Obviously, it's recurring. It will be the same next quarter but we start with a new list. So this way we can plan out for the whole quarter the videos and therefore have the goals set up so we actually see real progress because otherwise we will just fill up for the whole year videos and then we don't see the quarterly progress. So maybe there are coming some improvements or you guys know a different way to do it, but that's how we set this up so far. Then we have the operations. That's so far the accounting, team management and community. And operations is really some one-time task, but also recurring tasks and things like that. This is not tied to a goal. It's the business con continuity that uh, ongoing things to run the whole business. And we have the documentation. So for example, here's our ICO glossary that you can access inside the Paris Move membership. But when we do any updates, these are the living documents. So as soon as this gets updated, we know we need to update this in the membership and other things as well. And then last but not least, we have the databases folder. So far, we have productivity tools in here. So these are all the tools that we reviewed or 
with additional information. So if we have an affiliate link or things like that, and then we have the paperless movement tool link here and the discounts page because we have certain discounts only for the members, the official logo and so on. So here we have an automation. So for example, Scrintle is an example. They just handed in the application to become a verified partner and they have good chances to become one. And we are using verified partner form and therefore people can hear, uh, you know, the criteria to become verified then they provide all the data which then fills in the custom values in here obviously we could also use type form or other tools and then use sapia to bring in the data and so on but the form is good enough and then we trigger sapia as soon as the thing is handed in so we get a slack message that uh, something was handed in with the information but this way we automatically building up the database and the important thing is here now we have the related videos for example we could now click on here and then you see the related video that was about my latest video will the elephant die and there you see here it's connected to evernote when i go to evernote i go down and there you see the related videos we would see also the partner experts and on the other hand when we go to the videos and we go to evernote here that's the video but then i have the link to the tool so i make one click and i immediately go to the tool and get the additional information that i needed about to know about this tool so that's the whole setup that we have so far in ClickUp that we established every monday and thursday you can join tom and paco in their icore talk inside our paperless movement membership Get personalized answers to your questions and build your productivity system your way. Click the link in the description below for more info.